Oh yes, Sam. You're you're Sam. Hello. Yes, my name's my name's Robert Robert Skinner. The book I downloaded um, was Enjoy Life Forever um, at jw.org. Yeah. It's just very interesting that book. Um, I I've had trouble getting through to Jehovah's Witness congregations. I have left messages, uh, and no one's got through. Which, which congregation are are you? Wellingborough Midland. Sorry. Wellingborough Midland congregation. Well in Bremen Midland, yes, okay, yes, that's that's where, that's where right. are you where are you based? Are I'm, you I'm, I'm I'm based in the south south southwest. Um I'm quite I quite quite some way to the southwest of you in Devon. Are you in Devon? I yeah. Like miles away. Yeah, miles okay. away, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um you had trouble getting well what it is, um, because of um the COVID thing, we're not going from house to house. Yes. And most congregations got to a phone number like the phone number you, you left a message on for hours where we'll then, um, if I picked up there and follow up on it, so that's why I'm ringing you up. I was giving you a number by yes. one of my brothers who I get the phone messages. So I'm just following up for him. Yes, so that's, 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 that, that, that's fine. Thank you. Um, I found your book very interesting. Uh, lesson 13 on page 55 is particularly interesting, perhaps a little harsh. It says, how false religion misrepresents God. Yeah. Um, shall I read section two? Let, let, me, let me see if I can get that. I'm not working at the moment. I work for myself, fortunately. So I just, I'll try to get um, that particular look myself. Right. I've got some iPad here. Anyway, I'm not the best with technology. Oh. But um, I have got it downloaded myself. Right, okay. Uh, and, um, Yes, of course. Um, and then we can then we'll be on the same page, so to speak. Uh, uh, right. Lesson, what did you say? What lesson did you say, sorry? It's lesson, it's lesson 13. Lesson 13, I'm going to get to lesson 13. How false religion is represent God. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you want to read it or shall I? It's paragraph two. Paragraph two. You have a read of it, Tommy. Like yes, it. of course. False religion does not treat people as Jehovah does. The Bible says that false religion's sins have massed together clear up to heaven. For centuries, religions have meddled in politics, supported wars, and caused or approved the deaths of countless numbers of people. Some religious leaders enjoy a lavish lifestyle and demand money from their followers to pay for it. These actions prove they do not even know God yet alone have the right to represent him. It does seem to say, unless I've got this wrong, unless I've misunderstood this, that um, um, religions that are involved in politics or which meddle in warfare cannot represent Jehovah God. They're basically fake religions. Um, to, to an extent, I think you have got that right. Because you're talking about religion, not individuals. That's what you know, that's a bit difference between because for instance mm -hmm. it mentions there um for centred religion of meddling politics. Sorry, sorry, I, I, I it's very hard to hear. You speak very quickly. Are you holding the phone away from your mouth? It's very hard no, to no, hear. No, no, no. Let, let's see if there's any better for you. It says yes. for centred religion of meddling politics. Now one of the things is from our Bible study from my Bible study, up in the Bible, when Jesus was on earth, he said he is kingdom is not part of this world and he didn't when they wanted to make him king he didn't get involved in a political affair that's just briefly bringing in there's, a, there's studies which from those scriptures looking at just, not just one scripture as to why as Christians we'll get involved in the political affairs of this, of this world also it said he supported um, religion that supported wars and that again is another aspect which um uh, as Christians would lift up the sword uh, in a symbolic way against another Christian. Yeah. Um, or or prove You know, so, so in that context, that is what it meant by those words. That's just very briefly explaining it. It takes right. a bit more than that, a few minutes to explain it. Right. I've got a watchtower here. It's the 22nd of April, 1993, page six. I found yeah. this on jw.org. And it calls the churches that are involved in wars pawns of Satan. I'll just read it for you. Rather yeah. than encourage love for one's brother, 
The churches have supported and even promoted the killing of one's brother in war. Thus they have become pawns of Satan, the devil, just as assuredly as were the religions of the ancient Egyptians, Assyrians, Babylonians and Romans. It seems to say that any religion that's involved in warfare or politics, your, your literature seems to be saying that they're of the devil. What is what saying there? So, all right, then, if that's the case, then, um, if, a, if a religion today, that's what I'll explain it this way. Everything we base on as followers of Christ, we're going what Christ laid down as an example for us to follow. So, if you're on any excuse, Jesus Christ is walking the earth today, we agree with those, the action that individuals, organizations take. As footsteps follow the Christ, we should be following these steps closely. Would you agree with that? Um, I'm just trying to dialogue with you. Is your religion saying that religions that are involved in politics or warfare are, are, are of the devil? I'm trying to have a conversation. I'm trying to dialogue with you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I, uh, I'll answer it this way: that if a if a religious organisation, not individual religious religious organisation, is involved in politics, is involved in war, is involved with what we in, in general would just as unchristian acts, then you can question the authenticity of that organisation. Right, would that organization... Which is, which, is Chris, which, which is a Christians, as follow, footsteps follow the Christ, anyone who's a footsteps follow Christ, then have the question whether or not that is a true religion, because it's true and false religion. Well, your literature you is basically saying they aren't. Sorry, sorry, say your, your literature is saying that they don't follow Christ, isn't it? If a, if a religion is involved in politics or warfare... Your, your your book, your literature is saying that they they ca they cannot follow Christ. They can't represent Jehovah. They're not they're not following the footsteps that Christ sets. That that but that is what the Bible brings out, isn't it? That a footstep follows the Christ will follow his steps, like walking on the sand, a child walking on the sand of his father. So if, if it's in that Christ will disapprove of, then as followers of Christ, we should disapprove of it. Wouldn't you agree? Um, I'm trying to dialogue with you. I'm trying to have a conversation. So when I've looked at this, what I found is that the Watchtower in the past has had a lot of involvement in both politics and warfare in the past. Not at the level of an ordinary congregation or a congregational elder like yourself, but at the level of the shareholders of the Watchtower corporations and the governing body that's run them since 1971. For instance, I'll give you an example. In the Watchtower of the 15th of May 1918, that's page 6,257 of the Green Reprints. When Rutherford knew he was about to be arrested and go on trial, in that watchtower, he promotes the purchase of the Liberty Bond, also known as the Liberty Loan, to support the American military in the First World War. Um, that was money you could give the American military to, to, to support the American military in the First World War, interest-free. You just gave the government money and after the war they would repay you. Now that's in the pages of the Watchtower promoting the Liberty Bond to support the American war effort. Okay, well, if you, you know what, sir, that's an I've never come across. If you found it, then I'll say it's true. Uh, I'm not going to argue with you over that. But at the same time, though, you know, when it comes to as, a, as an organization, John Witness is, um, I want to always celebrate birthdays. We celebrate Christmas. We celebrate Easter. I don't but care. As a result of that, I, and, and I, as a result honestly, of that, goes could, off, could you slow trade. down? Please, it's like being machine gun talking to you. I feel like a first World War soldier going over the top and being machine gun. Can you just slow well, down? I I, I'm trying to dialogue. Okay, you're 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 okay. You're you're trying to shoot me. Um, if no, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, mate. I'm no, that's all right. That, 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 that's all right. I do the same thing myself when I get excited. I can see passion in your voice, and that's admirable. I, I can admire you for your passion and and your zeal. I mean, that's admirable. There are so many. Um, religious people I've met who, who don't have your zeal and passion and they're half-hearted about it. So that's that's an admirable quality. Um, Rutherford prayed during a national day of prayer in America with Catholic clerg cl clergy, ca with Catholic priests and Protestant clergymen for victory in the First World War at about that time, May 1918. 
Um, you know, I'm just pointing out that at that time the Watchtower was not neutral in warfare. think so today through the Henrietta M. Raleigh Trust she's a woman who died in 1945 she was very wealthy she bequeathed all her assets be turned into shares um, it's called the Henrietta M. Raleigh Trust it's just ownership yeah. of shares uh, the sole beneficiary is the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society so since her death in 1945 every year the Watchtower gets the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York gets share dividends from the Henrietta M. Raleigh Trust this trust is autonomous, it's self-owning. The dead can't own it, so Henrietta M. Riley can't own it because she's dead. The bank doesn't own it, the bank runs it for a fee, and the Watchtower doesn't own it, but the Watchtower is the sole beneficiary. The Watchtower gets about half a million to three quarters of a million dollars a year from the Henrietta M. Riley Trust. And yeah. it's a portfolio of investments, a standard portfolio of, of investments, that includes arms companies such as Northrop Grumman, which makes the B-2 bomber, Honeywell and Boeing. They also have shares in Pfizer. They've had shares in Pfizer for at least 20 years, which is probably why they're okay. promoting the vaccine so heavily. So why is the watchtower getting share dividends today from arms companies? If, you know, if, they, if they believe in Christian neutrality, shouldn't they act like the Quakers and the Mennonites and the Amish and, and not have share dividends from arms companies? Well, you know, so that's a question that I couldn't give you an answer to because that, that's you, you just give me information now, which is completely new to me. Um, so that's quite interesting in itself. Um, mm. Again, again, if that's the case, um, all I can say is that's for you got to make a decision whether or not, as I said before, this organisation is is. Um, not only take it on themselves, but to the Christ. That's why individually, that's why I said an organization is one thing, but individually, that's you and me got to decide whether we believe that the organization that God's using in the time of the end. Well, God, God, that's, God, why, that's why you've got to yes, make that decision. But your, but your book says that God will not use any religion that's involved in politics and warfare. I haven't covered politics yet. The Watchtower has been up to its eyeballs in politics for, for, for decades. <laughs> involvement in in politics i've just mentioned two instances of warfare according to your literature um religions that meddle in politics support wars uh, and then it goes on these actions prove they do not even know god yet alone have the right to represent him so how can the watchtower represent jehovah god when it's been involved in warfare for over a hundred years i mean another example would be the ram cam engine corporation um, um, yeah, engine corporation. Yes, it makes small oh, engines for drones, and some of these okay. engines have ceramic parts, so they can get very hot. And because they're ceramics, not metal, they don't buckle and bend. And these drones bop, uh, power these engines power drones which drop drop bombs on people in the Middle East. Now, James McCann of the Ram Cam Engine Corporation. He must like the Watchtower because he gave them, and I don't know if it was the New York or the Pennsylvania Corporation, he gave them over 5 million shares in the Ram Cam Engine Corporation. Why did they accept this? Um, I don't know if they've kept the shares. Maybe they kept them. Maybe they sold them the very next day. I don't know. But the Watchtower well, was given 5 million shares 
in a company that makes yeah. engines for drones that kills people in war. Why didn't they turn it down again, and say, we represent again, Jehovah? Right. We, we won't do again, that. Right. Yeah. Again, right, I, I, I was all saying to you, this is where, if you've done your research and your travels in the information, you then got to decide whether or not this is an organization that represents Jehovah, represent God in a way, and you've got to make the decision which whether you follow mm, that organization mm. or not. But yes, you know do, what? Do, 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 you, do, do, do you think that's going to be a very difficult decision for me to make? Um, I don't think it will be. If you've got no. all that information, you believe it's true, yeah. then you go on what, what you decide to do. But uh, you know what you're asking? Why are they? This is all new information for me. Um, and in that way, um, I'm sure that if you also look into the famous of the bits that you mentioned, um, there'll be a reason. There'll be, like you said you said they were offer shares, whether they sold the next day or kept it or, or the index. Of, I, but, I don't really know. But every but, religion's but you know, got reasons for owning shares in the military. The, the Catholics and the Anglicans were exposed on the BBC News 10 years ago. For, invention, for investing pension funds in a portfolio of shares that included arms companies. Now, that's a different situation to Henrietta M. Riley, because in this case, the Anglicans and the Catholic Church owned those shares. But it was exposed on the BBC News. It called them hypocrites. But all these religions have got excuses. They can talk for hours, giving, t t telling you and talking to you for hours on end as to, you know... Um, why they can talk their way out of any situation and it, it's, it's always the people who bring stuff to their attention who are the ones who are really to blame excuse me yeah. excuse me but you're saying but again I'll say to you right and, and this, is, this is where there's organisation and there's individuals if you're talking to me as an individual um, I've got to satisfy myself as an individual like you've got to satisfy yourself as an individual because uh, we stand or fall before God over on our own merit on our own, on our own decisions. The decision that individuals make. Could you say that again? You're speaking very quickly. You said something about our own merit. Uh, you just speak a bit more slowly. What are you saying? Stand, I'm, yeah. I'm saying that yeah. we all stand or fall. We're on our own merit. Everybody carries his own load. You've got the decision to make whether or not, as an organisation, just this is whether or not they are um, following the footsteps of Christ. If you think they're not then your decision is quite easy. If you think they are, and you've got questions, then um, it's a matter of, like you're doing, asking the question, then see whether the answer the mm -hmm. satisfy you. Yes. But we all individually make that call ourselves. It's a bit like the Monty we? Python film, isn't it? You know, we're all individuals. Uh, they, they say that in one of the Monty Python films. Uh, yes, uh, we are the all one, individuals. We're is, all individuals. No, no, uh, I've, the I've heard one, that. The one I remember is, is a lumberjack. That's one I'll The old mind. lumberjack one, yeah. 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 The, yeah. Other, the other ones, are, I'm, I'm afraid, I want a magic part of fat and such. So I don't know that one. Yeah. But no, yeah. it's. You, my, it's late, my, my, my late uncle was a famous psychiatrist, Robin Skinner. He was John Cleese's psychiatrist. And when they did the, the psychiatrist sketch in 40 Towers, remember 40 Towers? Yeah. yeah. Um, the psychiatrist they chose was a tall, thin man who looked very much like my Uncle Robin. Ah, <laughs> uh, um, um, Could I just ask one or two more questions? Um, in 2020, there was an election in America and a man called Vincent Hughes stood for the Democratic uh, Senate, the state Senate in the state of PA, which I think is Pennsylvania. Now, Vincent Hughes was lobbied by the Watchtower Property Company and got $10,000 from the Watchtower Property Company. So the Watchtower Property Company is one of a number of, a huge number of sub-corporations or sub-charities um, owned by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York and the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. So why is the Watchtower Property Company lobbying politicians by giving them $10,000? I mean, I've watched JW Broadcasting and, and you, you tell the children on JW Broadcasting 
not to buy ice cream money, but to put money in a box at the back of the Kingdom Hall. And little Sophia, she she didn't have her ice cream. She put the ice cream money. Well, I am, yeah. I, I mean, but they're legitimate, aren't they? I mean, ten thousand dollars is a lot of ice cream money. You miss it, then. When you said not to buy ice cream, I've got kids. I'll never tell them to do that. But, and but the watchtower and the organisation, I tell you not to do that. I think we're totally wrong. So but the, but the watchtower way, says I, I that on that J- Excuse me. On have you heard of the Caleb and Sophia videos? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. On JW Broadcasting, broad, broadcasting, there's the Caleb and Sophia videos, and on one episode, the children are told not to buy ice cream money, but to give really? the money to Jehovah. And so Sophia, she thinks about buying a lovely ice cream, and then she decides she's going to give the money to Jehovah. Have, and have so you, she skips. She skips to have the you. back of the hall where there's a box, and she puts her coin in the back of the box so rather than have an ice cream she gives her money to jehovah but would she give the money if she knew that her ice cream money is going to lobby politicians like in the 2020 election sorry vincent Vincent hughes sorry sorry that's vincent hughes i got the name wrong okay i'll tell you what i'm doing my kids right when my kids have their pocket money, I've encouraged them to put some in the contribution box. What they think, I've encouraged them to save some. I've encouraged them to spend the rest on whatever they like. That's what I've decision I've made. As I said, what decision we make yeah. as individuals is up to our own conscience and up to your conscience what decision you make. So the information you give me is very interesting. So if I've never come across. I mean, the K label was a video I've seen. I haven't seen that particular one, but perhaps I've missed something in it. <laughs> but it's not the way that I know my my kids are grown and my 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 brother and his kids and his grandkids. Not the way we brought what you say. Don't put money in the contribution box. Give it to Jehovah. That's not what is said in not in my part of the world, anyhow. Um, um, it so was said on the Caleb. That, it was said on the Caleb and Sophia videos. And there was um, another Watchtower episode where Brother Morris... Now, Brother Morris doesn't 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 eat ice cream. He's not terribly keen on ice cream. He likes something a little stronger than ice cream. Um, McClellan's. He's very keen on McClellan's, is Brother Morris. And he had the Caleb and Sophia videos drawn around him as, as he was giving a talk on JW Broadcasting. Um... I've seen still pictures of that particular broadcast. Now, you know, Brother Morris, he was he was caught at one Sunday morning. He was filmed at Bottle King, 17 kilometers or 17 miles from the Warwick headquarters. On Sunday morning, he had a sort of um uh trench coat on and he was buying he was buying 12 bottles of McClellan's whiskey. He had a shopping trolley at Bottle King. And he had twelve bottles of McClellan's whiskey. Um, and they, the, 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 the more expensive, he had six of one type at fifty nine ninety ninety nine, and six of another type at eighty nine ninety nine. I believe there's sales tax involved as well, and the whole total cost came to over nine hundred dollars. I mean, you know, that's a lot of children's ice cream money, isn't it, to pay for? Um, you Brother know Morris's you know, um, peccadillo. If, if, if the kids, if the kids pay for it, then it is. But you know what? It's a bit like what you told about the other, the other thing you said. We can all make, come to conclusion about different things, can't we? Yeah. We can all have our own speculation. Yeah. Um, speculation of fact is a different thing. Okay, fa- again, okay, okay, I'll okay. Back, facts. I'll go, I'll go, what, let me finish. Let yeah. me finish. I'll go back to what I said to you. Um, it all depends on individuals what what decision we make and what we want to do with the information we have. Bury this one minute. My other phone's going up. Bury this one minute. Yes, Don't sure. go away. Yeah, sure. Thank you. I won't. I will I will stay here with bated breath. Well, sorry about that. That's all right. Hello. Um, is it true that the Watchtower is currently building... A one billion dollar Hollywood st- standard studio, movie studio, near to their Warwick headquarters. That's going to be about one point five to one point six million sorry, square feet. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I'll tell you why I wouldn't know, right? Because that's so detailed. 
in life does really interest me. Yeah. I wouldn't know, and if you told me it's true, I'm not going to disagree with you. And if it is true, right, I've got trust in the organisation I'm in to know that there'd be a good reason for it. Um, there'd be lots of people go. Yeah, they need people's ice cream like money, that's why. <laughs> that's why they're uh, okay. to make more videos about oh, paying are your ice cream money to jw.org oh, oh, oh perhaps it's not whiskey money but it's not whiskey <laughs> all right well brother yeah, morris likes depends. the whiskey but um it, it depends it depends how right in every situation yeah you've got to decide my friend whether or not if you don't believe in this organization which obviously you don't so then i question you really i'm coming up with all these points what is the purpose well, I haven't actually got through to the main purpose of my call, which was the no, United no, no. Nations. I'm saying, what, what is the purpose? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just getting, getting through to that. I, I want to obey Jehovah God, but I've heard that the Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, after saying the United Nations was of the devil, it was one of the satanic wild, wild beasts of the Book of Revelations. In 1992, you joined the United Nations as an NGO. Your then governing body member, Lloyd Barry, signed the paperwork to sign you into UN membership in 1991. You're accepted as an NGO in 1992. That means What's non-governmental. NGO? It means non-governmental. NGO? NGO means non-governmental organization. And you okay. joined the United Nations to comply with your membership. You had to promote the aims of the Charter of the United Nations, which you usually did in your Awake magazine. So whatever was the theme for the UN for that year, that's what you wrote about in the Awake magazine. Why did you join the United Nations when you still claim today the United Nations is a, is a satanic organization? Do you, do you know what, sir? I forgot your name. What was Robert, your name again? And, and yours is? Robert. Sam. We Sam, sorry, Robert, Sam. Was it Robert, was it? Robert, Robert. Yes, Robert. You, asked me, you, asked, you asked me these questions, asked why, right? Um... I don't really know, Robert. But also, you know, you're giving me information again, which is totally new to me. At the moment, I've got to get out of the process whether or not I want to, one, investigate, two, believe, because there's lots of false information around. And really, at the moment, Robert, um, it, you've got to make that decision. If it's not an organization for you, that's your choice. Um, I'm not going to argue with you to, to tell you otherwise. If you well, really want to, it, it, well, can, Sam, can, I ask, can I ask you what's Sam, what Sam, 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 I'm trying to have question. a dialogue with you, Sam. Sam, it's not really a very difficult decision for me to make because I, I am, I'm actually, if you look at me, I'm rather overweight because I do like ice cream. <laughs> and, I'm, I and, I, and, I, and I can't stand whiskey. I love, um, I love, I love rum and raisin. I don't like whiskey neither. Well, My wife loves whiskey. Can I, can well, I if, if, if you like rum and raisin <laughs> ice cream, which I love too, yeah. you know, um, why are you connected to an organisation which says anyone connected to politics is of the devil, but the Watchtower joined the United Nations in 1992? Can I ask you a question, Robert? Yeah. Um, I think that Jehovah's Witnesses are very correct in the fact that at the local level, congregations should be run by people who are unpaid. One of the great terrible things that's happened to Christianity is having one person in charge of a building and that person gets paid a pension, a salary, a free house, a free car and over time that person, not in every case, there are some godly Christians far better than me in every denomination. But over time, what you see is many religions become corrupt because of paying somebody a salary. I think it's unbiblical. Okay. I think everyone should be unpaid. And I think Jehovah's Witnesses um, are spot on there. The one thing I would like to see is if somebody breaks the rules, you should open your Bible. You should not go to shepherd the flock of God and see what the organization has to say. And unfortunately, when people break the rules, the Bible is not opened. It's the watchtower procedures that are appealed can, to. Can I ask you another question? Yeah. Have you been a Jehovah's Witness? Never. No, I was an evangelical right. Christian. Right. Never been a right. Jehovah's Witness. And what, what religious organization belong to at the moment? None. I, I, I stopped attending in 1991. Um, I was I was baptized at Peniel Chapel, 
which was an Assemblies of God church in London, quite near to Kensington Temple. I was baptised in 1985. I gave up church, I thought for good, in 1991 when I was told at St Austell Baptist Church by my home group leaders that, quote, the Trinity was pagan. That's in a Baptist church. Honestly, these, these people are absolutely clueless. They're, they're, they're the most clueless bunch of people in church leadership. Um, I made the biggest mistake of my life in attending church again when I moved to Plymouth in the early 2000s. And I left for good in 2010, except for research purposes, I attended three Alpha course meetings in 2012. So at the last churches I attended were 10 years ago. I'm, six, I'm 61. Right, Robert, what is your aim? What are you looking for? I want to serve Jehovah God, and I think that when you have organisations that come... Can I finish? Sam, could I finish? When you have organisations that come between you and Jehovah, it doesn't matter if it's the Catholic Church or the Mormons or the Seventh-day Adventists or the Baptists or the Jehovah's Witnesses, to a greater or lesser extent, these religions come between you and Jehovah and they say to a greater or to a lesser extent, they're not all as bad as each other, and there are some good people, I think, in all of the denominations, and sincere people in all of the denominations, but to a greater or lesser extent, they're coming between you and Jehovah, and they're saying the way to the Jehovah is through us, through our building, through our ecclesiastical religious organization, through our pyramidal church hierarchy, many of whom are paid, not in every case, but in most cases they're paid money. And I think this money and this pyramidal power system corrupts people. I think people end up serving the religious system rather than Jehovah. Well, you know what Robert Wall said to you is this, on your aim to serve Jehovah, keep on your quest to find the religion that suits you in the way you want to serve Jehovah, because I think in the end, um, if you're sincere, Jehovah will see to that you do find that way to worship him in a way that's acceptable. But okay. going back to what I said to you very beginning, whatever decision you make has to be your decision. And whatever decision I make, I mean, my decision, but when you ask me, why are John Victor doing this and why they're doing that? You know what? As far as I'm concerned, from my research, from my studies, from when I started when I was about 18, right? Yeah. I've got happy with the organization I'm in. And, and what I'll say is this, there'll always be individual bits the individual will bring out and say, what's about this, what's about that? Some bits I'll choose to look at, some bits I'll choose to investigate, others I don't. The reason is, because there'll always be information which in my viewpoint is false information. And in that will be a bit of truth as well. Oh, I'm an, um, so I'm just saying that to one of our neighbors here. So in that way, keep on your quest for that. I hope you find your answer. That's what I can say to you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Sam, for your encouragement. I, I do uh, appreciate your genuine concern. Um, one other thing would be the watch. I mean, uh, with regard to the United Nations, there. Robert, Robert, when you quote the watch and the United Nations, all this, you tell me what it's a, it to me it's a bit of deaf ears because not when you say something, I can't say anything about it because it's the first information bringing for the first time. I'd be stupid to comment on it because if, if I have information in front of me that I know it's be authentic and true, then I'll comment. But you just ask me why and how. I cannot answer you. So it's a waste of time in my right. viewpoint. Why don't because, you copy unless, down... Unless I... Why, why don't unless you... I, yes. Why don't you copy down the fact that The Guardian did a series of articles on you, The Guardian newspaper. It, it, it talked about the Watchtower saying the United Nations was of the devil. And then it exposed the fact that you joined the United Nations in 1992. This was The Guardian for the 8th you know of October okay. 2001. Right. Again, right, and, and then when you tell me that, and when you say the Guardian said this or whatever else, I'm going to make a decision as an individual, which you've got to respect, whether or not, one, I'll investigate that, two, whether I believe it to be true, right? Um, that's where individually, I go back to my very first point, individually we have to, we stand on our own merit, we make a decision. No, we stand on the merit of Christ. We no, no, no. I stand no, on the merit we, of Christ. I don't stand on my well, own merit because right. I've got no, absolutely well, none. My action, no, 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 no. My actions, that one I wouldn't say on merit. My actions, what I do, I say my own merit, my actions like, that I take. Nobody's responsible for my actions. 
in that context, that's what I mean. Right? Uh, on that, on, on the decisions that I make, whether I investigate, not investigate, believe or not believe, goes down to me. The same as what you believe goes down to you. So if you believe what you read in the Guardian or whatever newspaper, whatever article, then that helps you to make your easy decision. Um, but uh, that's where I've got a, the choice, whether or not I believe and whether or not I investigate individual comments that's made, no matter where it comes from. Um, because I know, I've, I've, because I Sam, know some of it is, is misguided. Sam, Sam, the evidence is not going to go away just because you choose not well, to look at it. Oops, sorry, and, just and a second. Evidence, so, that, that is true. Um, and that is true. And, it, and that's why I stand or fall on my own decision. Yeah. You stand or fall on your own. Yeah. Your own. Um, the Guardian has never been sued by the Watchtower for slander or libel. Paul Hoffiel, because you see, when the Guardian newspaper article came out on the 8th why of October why, why 2001, the Watchtower applied to leave. They said, we want to be disassociated from the United Nations, obviously, because they're exposed. So Paul Hoffiel had to write a To Whom It May Concern letter. He's the section chief of the NGO section of the United Nations. And so on UN-headed paper, he wrote a letter saying the Watchtower, did to, it was the To Whom It May Concern letter, he sent out thousands of copies. I've got a copy of that letter. Okay, oh, And he good. said that you joined the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York, joined the United Nations in 1992. You had taken out NGO um, status. You agreed to a, a, a promote the aims of the Charter of the United Nations and to promote the United Nations aims. It doesn't say in the letter, but you did that in the Awake magazine. Now, this is on UN-headed paper by Paul Hothiel, the head of the NGO section at the UN. You've never taken him to court. You've never sued the UN. You've never sued Paul Hothiel. You've never sued the Guardian, why, because it's why, all true. Why will they sue him? Why will they sue them? Because he said you were members of the United Nations. And did you tell me that they actually redraw from that? They told me that the, they, just get the, the Guardian article came out on the 8th of October 2001, and Paul Hoffield's letter said you uh, wanted to resign from the UN, and you resigned the very next day, the 9th okay. of October say that, 2001. Say, say, that, say that answers your question then. They ask, you ask me why, you've got the answer already. Um, you, you ask me why they draw in. I don't know. You said they resigned. Case closed. They resigned when they were caught. I don't even need to look at that. Yeah, but Sam, they but, resigned but, but, when but they again, were caught. That Guardian article called, called the Watchtower Hypocrites. It called the Watchtower Hypocrites. Now, I don't believe I'm not in what? any way applying that to a good man like you. It's the yeah, leaders can of the... Can I ask one last question? Yeah. Then I have to go become... I'm at work and I need to get back now. Okay. Right. What is the purpose of all this information? What do you expect to, what are you trying to achieve? All right, what do you want me to do with it? Um, Tell me. Well, I'm working very hard to try and get the Watchtower stripped of its charity status in the United, K in the United Kingdom. As it happens, I've just actually um, emailed, I spoke to the Guardian newspaper this morning and I emailed two Guardian reporters uh, information that I have. I have recordings of Jehovah's Witnesses from across the United Kingdom saying that Queen Elizabeth rules by the authority of the devil. And so I've written to The Guardian and to other newspapers and said, I think the, the Watchtower should lose its charity status. I do not wish to see you banned, as has happened in Russia. I do not wish to see you lose your property. But I think you should lose your charity status. Because if you're going to say that the British government and you name the Crown, and you say the Crown, which is the head of the British government, rules the UK by the authority of the devil, and I've got over 40 Jehovah's Witness elders saying that, then I don't think you should have charity status. So that is the purpose of your call? That's, that's one of the purposes, yes. The other purpose is that people listen to these calls and people are therefore educated about the falsehoods of Jehovah's Witnesses and the fact that unfortunately, although many Jehovah's Witness elders are a sincere people like yourself, hard-working, diligent, sincere people with many admirable qualities. Unfortunately, well, you cannot much. defend the claims of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Every I, I, point I, I, thrown at you, I you don't. Think don't. It, I don't think. I don't think it's my responsibility to um, defend. I don't need to. Reality, I said to you, you're bringing information to me, which I had the first time. 
if you went to court, right, my friend, right, Robert, and you you were there, and, and the the the, uh, the prosecutor brought this case of the first one here, your lawyer here, and they'll say, hold on, um, that isn't so you can all get information. If I was to look up, look up your your life, and I was to go back and dig up your history, I'll be able to pass things against your name. You need a time to defend it by knowing what those things are. So when you bring these things to me, um, as I said to you, I've got to make a decision. Do I believe it? Do I not? Do I listen about it? Do I not? At the moment, my friend, nothing you brought so far to me is shocking. Nothing you brought to me is, is a revelation. I think, goodness me, uh, is this true? Because I choose, I would, I would even look it up. Um, are you there, because sir? I can't, see, I can't see the point. You can't see the point of what? I, I can't see. I was asking, what is your purpose? You've got an agenda, but that agenda is not mine. Sure, sure. You, as you said, as you said, you got you tell you got that two points away. The reason of your call, um, the reason we have the numbers for people in the wish to ring, it is is not in line with your agenda. So the call is not really what I expected. Hmm. Um. Anyhow, but thank you. I've got to go now. Okay, I understand. Thank you very much for your time, Sam. Bye bye, sir. Bye bye now. Bye bye, sir. Bye bye.